Hi, I'm Brent Johnson, and today we're at St. John Nepomuk Church, uh, just south of downtown St. Louis, and with me again is Horst Buchholz. I've been taking a little tour of some of the Catholic churches of the near so south side. Uh, and today we're at, uh, St. John Nepomuk is a Czech congregation. Um, yeah, I think it's the first Czech congregation uh, west of the Mississippi. Really? It's back to the middle of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. I know this neighborhood is called Bohemian Hill because there were so many mm -hmm. Czechs living here and this was their, their first church. So um, the organ is a uh, 15 rank Kilgan and we don't exactly know when it was put in, do we? I found one date of 1940, but I think that needs to be very verified. We have rem uh, remarkable archives from the archdiocese, so we'll have to do a little digging. We'll have to, the, year, the year is the only thing. It looks like it could be about that, or even a little earlier. Uh, mm -hmm. It's had some modifications, I know, um, but fortunately it all plays. Everything is, is in great shape because it's been updated and modified a little bit. Yeah, it actually has been maintained by uh, um, uh, Joe Salvador, the son of legendary mm -hmm organist Mario Salvador, one of my predecessors at the cathedral, and I think to give him credit, he did a great job keeping this organ uh, the way it is. Yeah. And we have, we have to give credit to the whole congregation for keeping this church, oh, which yeah. is no longer a diocesan parish. It's, it's no it's, longer it's, a parish, but it has the status of a chapel. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's been maintained. It's a beautiful building. Fantastic acoustics. Everyone should have a Wonderful like acoustics, this. wonderful windows. When, uh, we'll show a few pictures of the high altar. So uh, absolutely a stunning, a gem, yeah. I think, among the churches here. So I'm glad it's preserved and I'm glad the organ's here. Let's, let's see what we've got of these 15 ranks. Um, let's start here in the grate. What have we got on the grate division? Well, um, we have a open diapason eight, which is very majestic and fills the church with a lot of sound. broad sound. I know some of those pipes have actually been moved out of the organ to the side. We have a few pipes that have been relocated, probably just as to make room inside, I assume. Yeah, um, well, we'll have a look inside a little bit later. It's a relatively compact instrument. I mean, the whole organ is probably, what, no more than 12 feet? Something like that, yeah. It's, it's just 14, all right here in front of us. Well, less than 16 feet wide and, and then rather uh, 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 narrow. Um, um, secured here in the in the room. I mean, it's not like so many uh, organs are half in the tower or so. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Everything's right here and speaks off that back wall. Which probably uh, helps it also that it's not uh, too much exposed to the elements, like mm -hmm. a lot of organs sure. that uh, uh, from um, pigeon dung <laughs> to uh, 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 rain and mm -hmm. snow, that, uh, whatever happens out there. Very good. Well, what do we have after the open diet piece? Uh, there is a lovely doppel flute. I mean, very typical for the Kilgan instruments. Uh, Big flute sound. A big flute nice sound works well as a solo stop. We'll have a few uh, pieces maybe that. Yeah. Can, uh, and then we have, out. this organ has a lot of strings in it, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, despite a modest size with, uh, with 14 ranks, uh, we have uh, two eight foot strings on the grade, two eight foot strings on the swell. There's a violin diapason on, on the pedal. Uh, so uh, we'll show the stop list, uh, uh, I think. Uh, well, yeah, we'll have on. it on because it's not on our web, it's not on the St. Louis Organ's website. No, I mean, this is a, so an instrument that strangely has been overlooked. So yeah. uh, we'll try to fix that today. <laughs> so uh, here is the uh, um, great gamba, very typical, rich, stringy sound, lots of overtones, uh, uh, very typical for Kilgan. And then the softer uh, string, which is more of an accompaniment uh, 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 stop, is the Dulciana. And, and that is a stop that we find on a lot of smaller instruments, uh, because uh, the grate, uh, um, uh, which is uh, not enclosed, sometimes has to uh, serve as the accompaniment for things that happen on the swell. Mm -hmm. And so you want some very, very soft stops 
uh, as well as these bold open diapasons. I mean, if we just hear these two stops ones in contrast, I mean, here's the Dulciana again, and here's our open. It's a lot of dynamics uh, yes. in between these two stops. Indeed. So. And then we have one more flute there that we jumped over. We have one more flute, a, 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 a melodia. Also a nice accompaniment yeah. uh, stop. Sounds sure. like an, an open wood flute. Um, not we'll check that out in a minute. We'll uh -huh. look and see, yes. All right, and then we go to our four-foot range. Four-foot range, we have a, a four-foot principle. I'll play it once an octave lower here. Not as bold as the open uh, eight, but together they sound like this. foot definitely carries the, the foundation there. It's carries that, but to together, I mean, uh, uh, we're sitting here in, in the church, of course, and can hear how much the room uh, reverberates from just these two stops. Two stops that are already uh, uh, ample enough uh, to uh, lead some congregational singing. That's very true. All right, and then a uh, four-foot Zauberflut. Yeah, the famous magic flute, right? <laughs> uh, uh, um. Once with the Melodia. And then there is one more flute, uh, it's a piccolo two foot, but that's actually an extension of the four foot. So we have a number of extensions here. We come to that when we go to the, uh, to the swell division as well. So, uh, um, but and I'm curious about the Zauber flute, if it, was, if it was built the way we do usually see them today, which is a metal flute capped with a harmonic hole that makes, a, but I don't think it's the same thing. I don't think they were doing that quite back then. It sounds a little bit different, see, but yeah. we, we'll have a look at that yeah. in, inside. And then of course, uh, there's some chimes in there as well. Yes, let's see whether they work. Hey. Very good. Nice big bold chimes in yes. there. Mm -hmm. And then a full set of couplers, 16, 8, and 4 for the swell and the great. Um, so let's go look at the swell. Tell me what we've got in the swell here. Well, in, swell, in the swell, we have uh, one borden that comes at three pitch levels, uh, the 16-foot borden, uh, the 8-foot gedeckt, and the 4-foot flute, okay. uh, even uh, um, here uh, camouflaged with three different names, <laughs> so it's basically one rank. I mean, uh, Bold kill, uh, keyboard board in there going on. Yeah, yeah. typical for these organs. Of it. I'm not sure how well that comes across <laughs> uh, uh, over the air or so, but th that's certainly as big as some yeah. supas is on, on oh, modern, nice big, modern nice, organs. Nice big bass to the pedal, to the swell manual there. Yeah. And it, that is available in the pedal, but there's still another 16. So yes, that's there, not even your, yeah. your main mm -hmm. sub bass. Exactly. Very good. And then uh, we have strings in the swell as well. Yes, um, we have the solicinal. And then uh, a somewhat more bold uh, a string, the violina. And we have a Celeste that actually works with both of them, I think, pretty well. I mean, here is the Bois Celeste with the violina. The Bois Celeste uh, with the Salicinal. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, it does work with both, but it's obvious that the violina is is, is the is one its that was. Uh, it's a really uh, yeah. fantastic sound that strings the last. So, and those are both very different in quality than the two great strings. So you oh yeah, have four let's, different uh, ranges. Them, of uh, uh, um, yeah, I think the violina is probably the brightest of these. Dulciana again. Sorry, Sonata. And very effective yes. uh, swell box Indeed. that really. Uh, uh, That's a remarkable variety of string tone in a 15 rank organ. In a 15 <laughs> rank organ. Well, the priorities were different. Yeah, we don't have were, a yes. mixture, we don't have a Larigo or Sesquialter on there's this not, organ. There's, this only, not, there's, <laughs> there's only one reed. And it's there's only one reed, and we were debating whether that reed is uh, original or has been modified or well, so. Yeah, again, the organ has had some updates, and so it's possible it's been revoiced or yeah. replaced. We're not really sure what to see. And then, we jumped over one more string there. Yeah, we actually have uh, two more stops. The, the four-foot flute, mm -hmm. uh, of course, is derived from the Bourdon. And then we have a Salisette. I, I think that's an independent ring. Does not sound like this one. No, it is actually... Ah, okay, that's what I thought. It's solitional. It's solitional, which means... <laughs> this is only a total of 14 ranks. Ah, four ranks of strings. We take so. everything back, it's only 14 <laughs> ranks instead of 15. But it works very well uh, in combination uh, uh, for little things like... It's, it's, it's soft, but it adds that upper harmonic edge that maybe like a mixture, right? A soft mixture would add yes. brightness mm -hmm. to uh, quiet sounds like that. So yeah, it's, it's very useful. And then our trumpet. We have one trumpet, and of course, if you only have one reed in an organ, what, what do you want? I mean, uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, you want a reed that has a certain flexibility that you can use it in an ensemble. This is probably not your uh, grand trumpet voluntary <laughs> uh, reed, or we could try whether <laughs> that works on this one. But let's hear it once from the bass to the top. It's got a big sound to it, though. It does carry it. It has a pretty big sound, and uh, um, I'll, I'll try one piece where I use it with the octave couplers or so, where it actually gives the organ uh, the, the little ping that you need for a good forte, fortissimo sound. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then uh, from there, we, we have a tremolo. Does, how does the tremolo work on this organ? Uh, that is always a question. Yeah. So. Um, Rather uh, fast tremolo, but, fast, but typical. Appropriate uh, for the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the period, period. And it looks like a, a pretty typical Kilgan pedal division. It does. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, remarkable uh, um, here, uh, <laughs> we have only two ranks, I think, in, mm -hmm. in, in the pedal, <laughs> but we did we have 32, uh, <laughs> a 32 note pedal board. Um, so we have a soup bus. Uh, which is quite substantial, mm -hmm. and then the Borden, which is derived from the swell. And then there is a violin diapason. Two ranks actually uh, uh, work well together yeah. because the diapason gives that overtone definition to the pitch uh, and, and helps the, that. The diapason is way more, the violin diapason is way more string 
tone than diapason tone. I'm getting a lot oh, of these yeah. upper harmonics. Yeah. So you've almost got yet one more string. One more string there in there. They really one like that string. color, those bright, uh, yeah. edgy mm -hmm. pipes. So that's pretty. Well, and it's fantastic that it all plays. Um, well, I will also add in the pedal, you've got eight and four couplers to both manual, so you can create all sorts of sounds up here to broaden that limited palette of pedal True. Uh, tone there. And the console looks uh, uh, more or less original. I think the keyboards, think the keyboards were, have been replaced. Yeah, have uh, been replaced uh, once. Uh, um, and it has a working combination action. Has a working combination action. We have uh, four generals. We have four uh, divisionals here for the um, uh, swell as well as for the great. Very good. Well, I want to hear a little of it now in, in context and in concert. So can you play a little for us? Okay. first part of getting into this organ was figuring out exactly how we get in. The bottom panels come out to get underneath the chests. And we have a warning there, no smoking. I think if you have to put that kind of sign in an organ, you're already starting on a bad foot. But if we look inside, we see that there are some new electrical components there, new rectifier, new relay. There is still old wiring on the chest, unfortunately. But in we go with a wide angle. A closer look at the relay, it's all Peterson equipment. There's a swell motor. We see the chimes, which were obviously added a little later. And there's the bottom of our swell warden. It's not inside the box. Now we're underneath the great chest. We can look up and we see the flutes. But you can't really get up to the chest from here. You have to come in through that panel. Same on the swell, there's a panel that we have to get up to, so once we procured a ladder, it was pretty easy to get in. These have been hinged, so they just swing open. Fortunately, the swell opening has been hinged, but that it would hit the bottom, so it's been cut out. And I think there was a board put in here to fill in that space, but it's gone, because there's a screw sticking out right here. But this is so you can open it, and it opens nicely, and you can get into the swell. Well, and the first thing I see is a trumpet that is much newer than the old. So yes, yeah, definitely a, a new trumpet. But things are mostly very nice and clean in it. Here's the wide-angle view inside the chamber. You see our string, two strings in the front, and our cadet, the trumpet, and the celeste are at the back. One odd thing about the roof of this chamber, it's been altered a bit, not sure why. For a different arrangement of pipes, maybe the 16 was in here at one point and they lowered it. Not sure really what that was for. You can see we're not getting 100% effectiveness on our swell box here with this opening. That would be an easy fix. So now we're over on the great side, we have the same sort of hinged panel. And there are the great pipes. One odd thing is it looks like there used to be a roof or a covering over the pipes. 
Maybe that's just part of the framing to support the walls of the case. So you have the melodia there, which is harmonic. It does go harmonic down at the bottom. And then, interestingly, this I guess this is the gamba. It's got conical pipes with half-covered tops, which is really amazing. Kind of like a labial oboe sort of pipe. And then our doppelflute, which does have mouths on either side of the pipe. Dulciana's up there, and then open diapasons on the front. And I believe this is part of the gamba on this foot of the foot. Actually, it's labeled up there. Somebody's written on them. They are, in fact, gamba pipes. Let me open so you know what you're tuning. Here we have the Kilgan doppel flute. Definitely two mouths, one on either side of the pipe. And as I mentioned earlier, some of the pipes, the sub bass and the open diapason, have been put outside the chest, and there's actually a matching set of dummy pipes on the other side that obviously came out of some other organ because the, there's some stenciling visible behind the gold paint. And going back into the tower, we find the blower. And there's this interesting little panel that opens into the organ space, but once you're there, I'm not really sure what you can do. Perhaps this is a sign that the arrangement of the organ has been changed and the layout's different than it used to be some of that altered swell roof up there. Of course, thank you for demonstrating this lovely little 13 rank. We finally nailed it down. 13, 13 rank. There's a couple with yep. independence. The, the pedal violin I based is actually out of the swell. Is that so the, eight foot, the stronger string of the, the swell? Somebody yeah. told us it was 13 rings and we didn't believe them. So yeah, right, right. right. It was our fault. So it's, it's, uh, and we'll figure out what year it's from. I don't know, maybe somebody knows. If you uh, know something about this instrument or know where the records yeah. are, please feel free to comment or send us an email and let me know. What, when this instrument was built, but a great example of some Kilgan pipe work that seems pretty much untouched uh, for the most part. So, uh, if you've enjoyed this video, uh, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel for more. If you'd like to help us make more videos, you can do that by going to organ.media and clicking on support. We are completely watcher funded. I mean, it's just our viewers, listeners to our stations that support everything we do in organ media. And of course, if you're interested in classical organ music 24 hours a day, we do have three stations, organlive.com, Positively Baroque, and The Organ Experience. Just go there to tune in and have streaming music anywhere you are. We also have a mobile app where you can tune in and listen through your phone. Thanks for watching. I'm Brent Johnson. I'll talk to you next time.